hello guys welcome to our channel once again so today we are going to continue from where we had left last time we were talking about or we are discussing uh, databricks certified data engineer associates sample questions provided by databricks so we are solving and we are trying to actually understand each and every question um, so we have completed till 10th and we'll start from 11. so number 11 question quickly says the data engineer team need to query a delta table to extract rows so uh, there are some performance issues which they are facing while querying the delta table and they have already fine-tuned the size of the data file and they have investigated that concluded that rows meeting the conditions are sparsely located that means some of the uh, records which are getting written are actually uh, located in many different files that is actually creating problem in the performance so what are the options through which you will optimize the uh, on this query so uh, number a says data skipping yes data skipping has to happen um, b says z ordering bin packing right as a parquet file e is uh, tuning the file size so tuning the file size is already done right as a parquet file will not help much so data skipping is actually a process which is achieved by some optimization techniques that what you are trying to do is you are trying to uh, quickly find out that which file location it has to go to fetch the record suppose you are you have a um, query which says my month is a so and so month and year now there are a multiple uh, file location or multiple partitioning which you have done so the partition which is not storing that month or year file will not go there so that's how the data skipping is achieved here now z ordering and bin packing right so uh, databricks has given few commands which you, you call um, uh, optimization when you do optimization you either give an option of z ordering by giving the uh, column on which you want to optimize or z ordering is optional so when you don't do z ordering uh, the bin packing happens where actually it will try to distribute the files in a uh, proper manner so that the queries are faster right now when you give a column name for a particular uh, table it will try to store that uh, those columns uh, it will kind of a create kind of indexing where it will store the metadata of that so here the z ordering will help here. candidate z ordering and bin packing but because we are here we are talking about uh, a particular scenario on which the uh, filter has been done it has to be z ordering Going on to uh, next question, data engineer needs to create a database called customer 360 at the location. This so they have given the location they want to create a database. Uh, the data engineer is unsure if one of their colleague has already created the database. So here it's simple. You have to just create the database and you have to put a check uh, whether it has been already created or not. So you can simply use if not exist. So you will say create database if not exist. Uh, you will give the database name and the location. So here if you see uh, uh, answer one or the a answer has location but it does not have if not exist second one has if not exist but location is missing answer c has both actually so in this case answer c is correct uh, answer d says uh, delta location so delta location is in incorrect syntax so it has to be c now moving on to next question uh, junior data engineer needs to create a sparse sql table my table for which spark Manage both the data and the metadata. Okay, so here in the um, data bricks, you have two kinds of tables actually. One is called manage table, and one is uh, other is called unmanaged table. In manage table, what happens is data bricks actually manages your metadata as well as the data files. You don't have to uh, provide any location, right? Uh, in unmanaged table, what happens is you you can provide the location where your file exists, and data bricks only manages the metadata. So in case you drop a managed table databricks will drop your metadata as well as the files the actual data but in unmanaged what happens is if you drop the table only the metadata will be dropped but your files will still be intact so that is the main difference between managed and unmanaged table and you may have variety of question in and around this so now here we they are saying that we have to create a table which on which databricks is managing both right so what you have seen in the previous question, right? We were giving location for the database, same way. We provide location for the table as well. But here, because we want Databricks to manage it, we don't have to provide the location, right? Now let's see uh, the options. What are options you have? So A has a, a schema. And again, if you see option, they're giving the path. So we have to choose something where we, we don't have the path, right? Now A and B both have paths, so you can leave it. Uh, C says create manage table. So manage, we don't have to tell it explicitly. So the syntax of C is wrong. Uh, syntax D is again 
saying at the end using dbfs that is also incorrect so e is the right answer here you just have to say create table give the table name and the schema if you don't provide the location it will by default become a managed table so moving on to next uh, data engineer want to create a relationship when is relational object by pulling data from two tables uh, that relational object must be used by other data engineers in other sessions in order to save on storage cost the data engineer wants to avoid copying and storing physical data which of the following relational object should the data engineer create okay so let's go through the options here a is the view uh, view you know as like in a sql you create view on top of some physical table so view does not hold the data but it is just a metadata uh, b is temporary view so temporary view can also be created the problem here would be temporary view can be used only in the same session it cannot be used across session uh, delta table again yes it can be created and can be used across session but here i think they don't want to store it physically so they want to save the uh, space as well database of course would not be an option here spark sql table no i think view will be the right answer here so for question number 14 if you create a view it can be used across session and you don't have to store the data physically again question 15 says data engineering team has created a series of uh, tables using packet data stored in an external system the team is noticing that after appending new rows to the data in the external system their queries within database are not returning the new rows they identified the caching of the previous data as the cause of the issue which of the following approaches will ensure that the data returned by queries is always up to date okay so here uh, whenever you create a table in the parquet data you, you are going to keep appending new new uh, files to that now uh, if you are appending a files but when you are querying a same table you are not getting the up to date data so what else could be the possible solution problem and the solution so a says the table should be converted to the delta format uh, B says tables should be stored in a cloud based external system. So I think that would not help. Number B, uh, the table should be refreshed in the writing cluster before the next query is run. So, yes, this could be probably uh, answer here. I thought um, the table should be altered to include metadata to not cache. I think this is not an option. Um, e says table should be updated before the next query is run. So uh, you might be knowing um, you can refresh the table by running a command, right? So probably that could also be taken into account here. I believe that could be answer number C that you can actually refresh it. But here if we go through the answer about what is given, they are saying uh, you can create a delta format, right? So delta format actually internally takes care of refreshing part. You don't have to. Uh, refresh the table manually but actually if you are creating a uh, table you can also do a manual refresh but probably they want to avoid the manual refresh so they are suggesting here to create a delta format table so moving on to next question uh, there is a syntax given uh, for one table and uh, they are creating a new table from an existing table by just querying it if you look at the second part of it create table uh, customers per country as something on the right so a junior data engineer asks why the schema is not being declared for the new table which of the following response explains why declaring the schema is not necessary so we know that the second part would work and the question here is why it is not needed so option a says create table as select statement dropped schema details from the source table and query so i think yes this is correct actually just like a sql table you can create one table from another table and you don't have to give a schema so it will actually infer the schema from your query uh, let's see the quickly the other options the bc statement in for the schema by scanning the data so it doesn't have to scan the data it will take it from the table the statements result in tables where schemas are optional no that is not correct statements assign all column the type string no that is incorrect uh, e says statements result in a table that do not support schemas no so i think bcd is incorrect a is the correct answer here uh, moving on to 17 a data engineer is overriding data in a table by deleting the table okay so uh, here uh, you can either delete the data entire data from the table and uh, reinsert it or you can just use the override right so here the question is about the override 
which of the following reasons to override the table instead of deleting and recreating the table is incorrect here it's saying incorrect okay so we have to find out the incorrect so a says overwriting a table is efficient because no files need to be deleted uh, b says overwriting a table result in a clean table history for logging and audit purpose so remember wherever you are doing a uh, overwrite still uh, you are if it's a delta table again right if it's a delta table little table you know that it maintains the history so even if you are doing overwrite it will keep the auditing and logging uh, enabled it will not clean it will not remove the logging right uh, c says table maintains the old version of the table for time travel yes the delta table maintains that is an atomic operation and will not leave a table in unfinished state yes this is also correct Overwriting a table allows for concurrent queries to be completed while in progress. Yes, so delta table actually manages this internally. So at the time of override, also you can query the data. So I think option B is incorrect here. Which of the following commands will return record from an existing delta table? My underscore table where duplicate have been removed. So they have already removed the duplicates, and now you are saying uh, which query would return drop duplicates from this so i think you don't have you don't uh, have any such uh, command which says drop duplicate so it is incorrect select star from table where duplicate equal to false also uh, and they are not talking about any column which has uh, name duplicate right so it doesn't look right here c is saying select distinct star from my table so this thing will always give you distinct records right so this will definitely I return you the records merge into so it's again a merge into which would actually not return any record uh, so d and e both of them are merged so merges will never return the record right so here c is the right answer a data engineer want to horizontally combine two tables so it's more of a, um, a join query which they are writing in two table they want to use a shared column as a key column and they only want the query result to contain rows whose values in the key column is present in both the table so it's a typical question of an inner join where you want to get only those record which is available in both the table so inner join is the right answer here 19a uh, here it's a question about the array actually and the uh, table has been created or the job frame has been created using json and json has one of the column as an array so if you get array kind of a scenario we, there are some functions which are available like here you have an array of items right and within that you have item ids now the output is saying that it should be cat id and item id should be written so here you have to use the explode option so explode what it will do is it will create that many uh, rows for each uh, array of items so here number uh, what it is d so D is the right answer. You, you should not be using filter, flatten, or a slice, or reduce. It should be explored here. Yeah, now this is also a, a similar question to that. The only difference here is uh, the second column, which is not a pure array. Uh, here it is three columns. Like it, it's a kind of a struct. So uh, right away you will not use explode here because the output which is needed here is only two columns. One is transaction underscore ID and the date. So what you can do is transaction id you can directly select it is available and for date you can say payload dot date because payload is the uh, uh, struct here right so for question number 21 answer is b uh, moving on to 22 data analyst has provided a data engineer team with the following sparse sql query so they have given a query the data analyst okay so here they are talking about creating a dynamic query because here if you look at it says from store underscore sales underscore some date now they want to keep changing the date um, dynamically they don't want to i mean they don't have a table which is uh, static so how you can achieve this kind of thing right so a says they could wrap the query using pyspath and the python string variable system to automatically update the table name uh, b says they could have manually replace the date within the table name with the current day's date and so manually it should never be and they could request that the data analyst rewrite the query to be done less frequently no you you cannot ask somebody to run it less frequently just because you are not able to automate it right so they could replace the string formatted date in the table with a timestamp formatted date uh, d okay a and d looks uh, uh, close 
they could pass the table into PySpark and develop a robust tested module on the existing query. Hmm. So I think A is the most appropriate answer. So what you would do is you can create a kind of a um, string first and that is string would be concatenated where at runtime you can change the date. So A here uh, looks more appropriate. 23 uh, data engineer has ingested data from an external source and to PySpark data frame they need to briefly uh, make this data available SQL for a data analyst to perform a uh, quality assurance check on the data which of the following command should the data engineer run to make this data available in SQL for only the remainder of the spark session okay so I believe they are talking about keeping a same session here so I think temporarily temporary view uh, would work you would go with uh, option A, raw underscore df dot create or replace time view so that uh, rest of the time your data analyst who is comfortable with uh, SQL queries, he can write SQL queries on top of uh, your time view. So yeah, 23 uh, option A becomes the right answer. Here again, I think this is a similar question to creating a dynamic query. Data engineer needs to dynamically create a table name string using three Python variable, region, store, and year. Uh, example of a table name is as below. So uh, at runtime, our region, store, and year that should be get concatenated and should become say NYC hundred underscore sales underscore two zero two one. So there are three variables that need to get concatenated. So simple, I mean, you have to conc you have to use the concatenation uh, syntax here. You get A, it's, it is, I don't know, um, A, B, and C, uh, da, 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 C, D, okay. So I think they have used F, uh, uh, F string to format it. So region, store, if you look at, there's no underscore or any spaces here, right? So region store, it's coming continuously, underscore sales, underscore here. So, uh, they will replace three values uh, region store and year. So D is the right answer here. A data engineer has developed a code block to perform a streaming read on a data source. The code block is below spark.read schemas have given format option. And load the code block is returning an error. Which of the following changes should be made to uh, the code block to configure the block to successfully perform a streaming read? Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. If you look at it, if it's a streaming, actually uh, the function for that is read stream, not read. Right. So option A is the read line should be replaced with read stream. Yes. Uh, option B is new dot stream line should be added after the read line. Now. So either you'll use dot read or dot read stream, both of them cannot come. Uh, the third says the format log file line should be replaced with the format stream. No, uh, we don't have to give format as stream. When you say read stream, actually it knows that this is a, uh, a streaming file. So option clearly here is A. So I believe we are again uh, going long. So what I'll do is I'll create a part three for rest of the questions. And because we have reached till 25, we have total 45 questions. So I'll try to break it to the third part. So guys, thanks for watching and uh, please like it, comment it. Uh, we welcome your comment. Thank you.